so now in this video we are going to cover series capacitors these are not in series they're completely unwired right there but um, we're going to measure them later on the point of series capacitors and it doesn't come up much but it's important to understand for when it does come up uh, you put capacitors in series one may be because you don't like uh, the value capacitors you have and uh, in this case you can put them in series you end up with uh, half the uh, capacitance but uh, more likely you have a voltage that uh, a higher voltage than what the capacitor can handle uh, especially super capacitors they have very low voltages um, but it's a lot harder to measure them um, compared to what we'll do in this video so in any case uh, we have a capacitor I, I think that's what these can handle 50 volts but in any case if the capacitor can only handle 50 volts of course you can't charge it to a higher voltage but the way to charge a capacitor um, so in this case it would be two series capacitors to a higher voltage than the rating is to put them in series and um, that's because when uh, you charge the two of them both of their voltages are going to go up and uh, their voltages add up right there so even though this might be 50 volts and that's 50 volts you have a total of 100 volts um, now when it comes to the capacitance realize that uh, when you put a certain amount of current into a capacitor let's just look at this one capacitor right now its voltage is going to uh, go up um, when you have components in series though they all share the same amount of current so the current needed to raise that capacitor by a certain uh, voltage will also be raising this capacitor since they're equal value by the same amount of voltage so the voltage is going to rise twice as fast whether you're charging or discharging so it's going to charge twice as fast and discharge twice as fast as one of them alone so ultimately that's the equivalent of having half the capacitance and so now we have a couple uh, capacitors here that are 10 uh, microfarad again it's important that they be equal value if they were charged to a high voltage we'd see a big spark uh, right there but they're low value capacitors so even though there'd be a, a, a big spark it wouldn't be enough to probably cause damage to anything but in any case before you measure them you want to make sure they are discharged if they are part of a circuit um, you want to make sure it's at least open on one end and then you could put like a resistor or something especially if it's a larger value a capacitor across it until it is uh, discharged and that brings us to the uh, multimeter right here which can measure uh, capacitance it is polarized and um, so like with these polarized capacitors you want to put the uh, red probe to the uh, longer lead the positive side the black probe to the negative some multimeters you might even have to move the uh, black uh, probe I uh, don't have to ever move it for this meter and uh, even the uh, capacitance right there red probe stays there I only have to move it for high current on this one be it but be aware that you may have to move it uh, for other meters so uh, we set it to measure capacitance it is auto ranging um, you would set it to a value higher than you can expect if uh, there's numbers but uh, you won't damage it um, by you know measuring a larger uh, capacitor and uh, once we get a, a good connection I don't know why we are not getting anything maybe that is a bad capacitor all right I just had to hold it longer so again they have a tolerance so we're not going to get exactly 10 microfarad on these and uh, yeah I just gotta hold it hold it in place while it's uh, registering the range right there so yeah they're both a little bit higher and uh, we already discharged it. so we measured them um, you know they're a little bit more than 10 first let's do a parallel right here and um, so you'll probably hear if you put them in parallel their capacitance adds up and that's literally all it does we'll probably have 22 microfarad on there maybe 23 there you go and uh, that's it you know um, if they're 50 volt capacitors which I think they are then uh, yeah they're 50 volts uh, capacitors then you still charge it to 50 volts all it does is raise their capacitance that's it it doesn't change the voltage they can handle uh, because they will stay equally charged uh, so they'll both be charged uh, to 50 volts if you charge them in parallel to uh, 50 volts uh, that's fine but that's the equivalent of 22 uh, microfarad so there we go um, so it's not 5 microfarad because they were a little bit more they were uh, like 11 plus a little bit more uh, microfarad so that would be a little bit more than 5.5 .5 microfarad to get half of the capacitance of one of them which is what you get when you put two of them in series like that and um, 
Um, so, you know, it uh, doesn't come up a lot, but it's something to be aware of. Batteries are uh, very uh, similar if you put them in series. Uh, you know, their uh, voltage, they can handle more uh, voltage, provide more voltage, be charged to a higher voltage than one of them alone as well. So, um, you learn this more when you're dealing uh, with batteries. And uh, again, with uh, batteries, just because you charge uh, the two of them to, let's say, 10 volts, doesn't mean each one of them will be 5 volts. One of them might be 6 volts and the other one 4 volts. In fact, let's take a look at that. And so here we uh, come to the power supply set to uh, 5 volts. And it uh, doesn't really matter what uh, current we set for this one. And uh, we're going to set it to 10 volts, as I said before. We're going to set the meter to uh, measure uh, voltage. And the I put little jumpers to both ends of the series capacitors uh, right there. So we can get that total voltage, it'll be about uh, 10 volts. And uh, there you can see, 9.9, .9, practically 10. And um, we will first measure uh, this voltage and we'll see some interesting uh, stuff. So there you can see, that was actually four volts. That's the uh, example I used earlier. It's going down because the capacitor is uh, discharging it. Or the uh, meter, I mean, is discharging it. And also, make sure you turn it off of measuring capacitance as soon as you're done measuring capacitance. You don't want to measure capacitance while you are applying a voltage to uh, a circuit. So, in case, there we go, we're measuring voltage again now. So there's 6 volts, as I said before. So I thought they were going to uh, be equal, but uh, they were actually already off. I was going to force them off. Uh, well, we were going to see that they start changing slowly with the capacitor but this is only a 1000 ohm resistor right there so what we're doing is we're giving current a path to just that uh, capacitor this capacitor will discharge uh, through the resistor in the uh, long run and uh, so again we're working with uh, 10 volts and um, the angle I'm at it's kind of hard to see where everything's plugged in there you can see we got the full voltage across that capacitor as I said this one as I said before uh, discharges right there so that is a risk that you have um, when they are in series. It's easy to get them unbalanced. Now, the simplest way to uh, balance them, in my opinion, I think is a couple of uh, uh, resistors. So you don't want them to be a value where they will uh, discharge. This is actually 10 million ohms right there. So it's uh, not going to quite... Uh, balance them. It's like the same amount of resistance as the uh, meter basically. Um, so again, we'll see, uh, we could use the probes backwards, we'll just get a negative voltage. And uh, there you can see, uh, 10 volts is across the uh, two of them right there. Now we'll just measure across uh, this one. And uh, so yeah, that has most of the voltage, but there you can see it's probably going about twice as quickly um, towards uh, 5 volts each right there. If we come up here, I'd think uh, we uh, yeah that's also uh, equalizing so yeah two resistors there are uh, helping to equalize it um, the resistor the meter I think has the same resistance when it measures the current because a little uh, current uh, I mean that the, the uh, voltage a little current does pass through the meter so the meter will unbalance them a little bit too but there you can see with the two resistors out of that uh, 10 it's pulling them both closer to five volts each right there so that's one way that you can do that doesn't look like it'll be very long now before they are five volts each so I know uh, that's uh, pretty boring um, let's uh, turn the uh, power supply voltage off but in any case there you can see that was helping to keep them equalized and um, actually when I turn the uh, power supply voltage off that uh, instantly discharge the two of them. We actually get a negative voltage at the supply right there. Um, but uh, it's going to be even worse for one of the capacitors. So that's in the positive. This is probably like over a volt uh, negative right there. So, um, you know, that's not going to hurt it. You don't want to put these reverse uh, voltage, but like a voltage or two will probably be fine, at least for a little while. You just don't want to actually charge them to a relatively high voltage while they are backwards. Um, that's an easy way to uh, damage them. But uh, there you can see, it's more negative than what the supply was. So that's another problem. If they become unbalanced, and then when you discharge them, it can actually become negatively balanced. And if they were charged to a high voltage to begin with, um, 
that may put it in reverse at a relatively high voltage. But there we saw that the two resistors are kind of equaling things out and uh, even with it uh, being the reverse voltage it's uh, coming back to zero volts so that'll help keep it from being reverse voltage for uh, too long. And these capacitors, um, I don't know all the details, I do know though that uh, the way they polarize them is they you know give them a gentle charge in one direction. So I'm going to turn this on. Now we're charging in one direction. They probably use like a low current at first and uh, apparently it's not really stopping current to begin with um, but it does start building up a uh, resistance to change uh, or starts building up an ability to gain charge I should say in the direction that you are charging it and it gets stronger and if you put it in backwards then it loses that ability to stop current from actually flowing through it you know um, it can't build up a charge in the opposite direction it becomes a conductor at some point and then you can like uh, fry it so you got to be very careful if you try to change its polarity but uh, you should just use the polarity that it came with so again I'm not an expert on that but I think that is the basic so again whenever you're done with the meter I know this is a really long video thanks for sticking around this long whenever you're done with the meter turn it off especially if you don't have it set to measure voltage measuring voltage is the safest uh, measurement um, you can probably ever make uh, current you might blow a fuse capacitor you might uh, cause problems or something too so um, definitely uh, turn it off and uh, make sure it's turned off or make sure it's set to measure voltage when you actually measure voltage as well don't assume that it is set to uh, voltage but uh, that's it for this video thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos that I posted on the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video